All right, we're going to continue on with question 9 here. Looking at uh, 9c, we're not going to go through this one because it's the same as part b with one exception. Uh, what we need to do here is divide both sides by 2, so we end up with cos 2x equals minus a half. And so now it becomes very, very like, much the same as this problem here, uh, except it's uh, cos is negative. Where's cos negative? Well, it's in the second and the third quadrants, so that's where, where those angles will be found. This one here, however, we'll spend a little time doing this one here. So that's the problem. Um, this looks a bit more complicated, doesn't it? So let's see what we're going to do with that. This is too hard to work with straight off. So what we do is say, okay, let that equal the angle, th an angle theta. So that looks much easier now. Sine theta equals minus a half. Now what, angle, where, what are we actually dealing with here? Minus a half, where's sine a half? Go up to here. Uh, sine a half, there you go. So it's pi on six. Pi on six is what we're actually uh, going to be working with. So in here, it's pi on six, but it's minus. So what does that mean? Well, very quickly, if it's minus, where is sine minus? Well, we know it's positive here, positive here, so sine's minus here. And here in these two quadrants, the third and fourth. So the angles we're going to be dealing with is this one here, this one here, or in other words, all the way around to there, that angle there. So if it's pi on 6, then this is going to be all the way around to here is 7 pi on 6. And continuing all the way around to here is just pi on 6 short of 2 pi, which is 11 pi on 6. So these are the two angles which theta could equal, third and fourth quadrants. But we've got um, uh, um, some little issues here. Um, here, we consider that, that uh, well, we just go up to here, x is equal, x plus pi on 3 is equal to theta. So we found out what theta is, this and this, but we need to know what x is. So because of this, we need to take minus, uh, subtract pi on 3 from both of these values. And when we do this, we get this, and we get this. So there's our two answers. Now, is there only two answers? Well, let's just have a look. That's our domain. X is from there to there. So if we add pi on 3, because that gives us x plus pi on 3, and remember, that's our angle. There it is there. X is x plus pi on 3. When we add pi on 3 to both sides, or to all of it, we get that, this, and this. So finally we end up with x plus pi on 3 is between here and here. Now, where is that? Well, this, that means you've actually gone around twice because that's equal to 2 pi plus pi on 3, isn't it? That's what that equals. So if that's the case, we go around 2 pi and then pi on 3 again. So we end up back here. That's where that is. However, our problem is only in the third and the fourth quadrants. So we haven't gone around far enough to include any more angles. So we only include the angle that's here and the angle that's here. Those two angles, just as we drew back up here. They're the only two angles. So that's the end of, end of, the, um, end of the problem there. And they're the two angles that we, that we have. Now, there could be many angles which have actually fulfilled this. It's the domain between 0 and 2 pi, or this domain here actually, which restricts what values we can use. Confused? Stick with me till we go to the next, next problem.